Due to the graphic nature of this program, viewer discretion is advised. At Halloween, our thoughts turn to such frightening things as the witches of Old Salem, vampires from Transylvania, and the magnificent haunted houses of New England. Yet in truth, Indiana can match anywhere else in the world for tales of mystery and horror. For generations, strange stories of Indiana's darker side have been told, but only within recent years have these stories been collected. Up a crumbling, winding staircase in Bloomington, Indiana, lies the path to the Indiana University Folklore Archives. Within its walls are innumerable files, and literally hundreds of stories about Indiana's ghosts, goblins, and monsters, and all are said by their tellers to be true. We would like to invite you to take a trip with us now, into a world you've never seen, even though you live in it. Let us tell only a few of the many stories there are to be told. Be warned, you may find these stories frightening, even shocking, but every story is drawn from the files of the Folklore Archives. Are they true? Well, perhaps you should decide. After all, you do live in haunted Indiana. Rich in history and folklore, Indiana is home to numerous haunted locations that intrigue ghost hunters and thrill-seekers alike. From historic mansions to eerie cemeteries, Indiana offers a variety of spots where the supernatural is said to linger. Here are some of the most haunted places in the Hoosier State. The Willard Library in Evansville is perhaps the most famous haunted site in Indiana. Built in 1885, this Victorian Gothic structure is said to be haunted by the Grey Lady. The apparition has been seen by staff and visitors since the late 1930s. She is described as a misty, gray figure that roams the library, occasionally moving books and other objects. The Grey Lady's presence has been so consistent that the library set up a ghost cam for enthusiasts to watch for paranormal activity. The Whispers Estate, Mitchell. Whispers Estate, located in Mitchell, Indiana, is renowned as one of the most haunted locations in the state. It has attracted paranormal enthusiasts from across the country. This early 20th century Victorian mansion is steeped in history and tragedy. With a reputation for intense and frequent paranormal activity, the mansion was built around 1894 by Dr. John and Jesse Gibbons. Doctor? Gibbons was a prominent local physician who also used the house as his office and clinic. The mansion witnessed numerous births, deaths, and surgeries. Many were fraught with complications. These tragic events are believed to contribute to the strong spiritual presence felt within its walls. Several tragic incidents occurred during the Gibbons residence, setting the stage for the estate's haunted reputation. Legend says a family rode by the home in the early 1900s. They were in a carriage and their horses became spooked by something unseen. The carriage turned over and killed both parents. These were the children adopted by the couple. Sadly, two of them died in the house. The first child, a 10-year-old girl named Rachel, died in a fire in the front parlor in 1912. Legend says it was in mid-December, close to Christmas and Rachel wanted to peek at the presents underneath the tree. In her haste, she knocked a candle over onto the tree. The tree had been up for several weeks, so it was incredibly dry. It nearly burst into flames when the fire fell upon it. The remnants of this tragic fire can still be seen in the woodwork of the room. Rachel's presence is still felt and heard, with reports of her laughter and footsteps echoing through the halls. Another child died in the master bedroom not long after. Some researchers say it was a boy, while others claim it was a girl. The ten-month-old child died of unknown causes. In 1933, Jessie developed double pneumonia. She died shortly thereafter in the same master bedroom. That left the couple's only surviving child, Helen. Helen was also the only child the Gibbons had official records of adopting. Later on, Helen tried to have her father institutionalized. 
There were allegations that he was obsessed with sex and tried to inappropriately touch or fondle female patients. There were also numerous rumors that the doctor performed many particularly brutal abortions in the home. Legend states there are four regular graves in the backyard along with a refuse pit for medical waste, such as amputated parts and aborted babies. Whatever his life really was like, it ended in 1944. Gibbons also died in his master bedroom of pneumonia. Both Gibbons and his wife are now believed to roam the house as phantoms. Helen didn't want the home after Gibbons passed. She quickly sold it. There's little formal documentation afterward, however. A man purchased the home in the 1950s. He died in the bathroom and wasn't discovered for three days. The next two victims were father and son. A special needs young man named Gary fell down the steps and broke his neck. The family moved out but forgot some items. The father, Virgil, returned to pack the sentimental items they'd forgotten. The emotional devastation was too great. Virgil suffered a massive heart attack while packing. He died. Locals began to believe the house was just cursed. The Gibbons house eventually earned its name, the Whispers Estate, because subsequent owners often mentioned the disembodied voices or whispers encountered. This phenomenon was particularly common in the front parlor and the master bedroom. Many guests reported hearing a child's cries for help, as well as hushed conversations when no one else is present. Some visitors also report hearing phantom children play. The Vortex Room, one of the estate's most notorious rooms, is on the second floor. This room is a hot spot for paranormal activity. Many investigators report a strong, almost overwhelming energy upon entering. Some visitors have grown dizzy or nauseous. There are also reports of phantom spectators that give guests the uncomfortable sensation of being watched. Paranormal investigators have recorded significant electromagnetic field, EMF spikes and other anomalies in this area, adding to its reputation as a focal point for spiritual activity. Whispers. Estate is known for more than just sounds and feelings. It has a usual history of physical interactions. Objects are often moved or thrown without explanation. Doors open and close on their own. Many visitors have felt unseen hands touching or pushing them. Some have reported being scratched or having their hair pulled. This intense paranormal activity has made this house the subject of various paranormal investigation shows. Investigations have yielded a wealth of evidence, including EVPs, electronic voice phenomena, photographic anomalies, and video recordings of unexplained occurrences. The estate offers both tours and overnight lodging for anyone brave enough to explore its haunted halls. The estate's history, marked by tragedy and intense paranormal activity, make it a fascinating destination for those interested in the supernatural. The spirits of Dr. Gibbon's family and the many patients who passed through its doors are said to still linger, creating an environment rife with ghostly encounters. Whether you believe in ghosts or not, the stories and experiences from Whisper's estate are undeniably eerie, adding a layer of mystery to this historic Indiana mansion. The French Lick Springs Hotel, nestled in the picturesque town of French Lick, is a grand resort known for its luxurious amenities, historical significance, and an intriguing reputation for paranormal activity. This historic hotel, with its rich past dating back to the 19th century, has been the site of numerous ghostly encounters that continue to captivate visitors and paranormal enthusiasts alike. The French Lick Springs Hotel was established in 1845, originally attracting visitors seeking the curative properties of the local mineral springs. The hotel flourished under the ownership of Thomas Taggart, a former Indianapolis mayor who purchased it in 1901. Taggart expanded and modernized the hotel, transforming it into a luxurious destination for the rich and famous. His extensive renovations and the hotel's subsequent success laid the groundwork for its grand reputation. One of the most prominent spirits to haunt the hotel is that of Thomas Taggart himself. Taggart's presence is often associated with a strong odor of cigar smoke, even in areas where smoking is not permitted. 
Many guests and staff members have reported a spectral figure resembling Taggart, dressed in early 20th century attire, wandering the halls or riding a phantom horse-drawn carriage around the property. His apparition is often described as benevolent, as if he is still overseeing the hotel he loved so dearly. A phantom bellhop has also been reported at the hotel. This spectral employee assists guests in the dead of night, only to vanish without a trace once his task is complete. Descriptions of the bellhop vary, but he's most often seen in a hotel uniform from the early 1900s. Guests have reported interactions with this ghostly figure, such as receiving directions or help with luggage, only to later discover no such staff member exists. The ghost of a young girl is another common apparition at the hotel. Her presence is frequently felt in the hotel's expansive hallways and staircases. Witnesses often hear her playful laughter or see her fleeting form out of the corner of their eye. The identity of this child remains a mystery, but she's believed to be connected to the many families who have visited the hotel over the decades. Her playful spirit is considered harmless, adding a touch of innocent charm to the hotel's haunted history. Several areas within the hotel are known for their paranormal activity. The sixth floor is a hot spot, with numerous reports of unexplained noises, shadow figures, and sudden drops in temperature. Guests on this floor often describe a feeling of being watched or followed. The basement and old service tunnels are also areas where paranormal investigators have captured unusual readings and recordings, including EVPs, electronic voice phenomena, and other unexplained photos. Staff often report mysterious calls from empty rooms. The French Lick Springs Hotel's reputation for paranormal activity has attracted the attention of ghost hunters and paranormal researchers from around the country. It's been featured on various television shows and in paranormal literature. These investigations have yielded a range of evidence supporting the claims of ghostly encounters, from eerie photographs to chilling audio recordings. The hotel embraces its haunted reputation, offering ghost tours and special events that delve into its supernatural history. The French Lick Springs Hotel stands as a testament to both opulence and mystery. Its luxurious accommodations and historical significance are complemented by a rich tapestry of ghostly tales. The spirits of Thomas Taggart, the phantom bellhop, and the playful little girl add an element of intrigue that continues to fascinate guests. Step Cemetery is in the heart of the Morgan Monroe State Forest near Martinsville. It's one of the most infamous haunted locations in the state. The cemetery is known for its eerie atmosphere and unsettling legends. This small, secluded cemetery has captured the imagination of paranormal enthusiasts and curious visitors alike. Its history is filled with tales of ghostly apparitions and mysterious phenomena that continue to intrigue and spook visitors. Step Cemetery was established in the early 19th century. It remains one of the oldest cemeteries in the area. It is the final resting place for many of the region's early settlers, including members of the Step, originally Step, family, after whom the cemetery is named. The cemetery fell into disrepair over the years. Its remote location contributed to its overgrown and neglected appearance. This abandonment has only added to its aura of mystery and the perception that it is a place where spirits linger. The most famous ghost associated with Step Cemetery is the Lady in Black. According to legend, she is the spirit of a grieving mother who lost her young child, said to be buried in the cemetery. The child's grave is marked by a small, crumbling tombstone near a large, gnarled tree known as the Grave Tree. The Lady in Black is often seen dressed in mourning clothes, wandering the cemetery, particularly near the child's grave. Witnesses report she appears at dusk or in the dead of night. Her presence is accompanied by an overwhelming sense of sadness. Some have even claimed to hear her sobbing quietly as she kneels by the grave. In addition to the Lady in Black, many step cemetery to have reported various other paranormal phenomena. These include apparitions, 
Ghostly figures are often seen moving among the tombstones. Strange lights. Unexplained lights, often described as orbs or glowing mist, frequently hover around the cemetery, particularly near the old tree and certain grave sites. Disembodied voices. Many visitors report hearing whispers, cries, or even conversations emanating from empty portions of the cemetery. These voices are often indistinct, but carry a chilling resonance. Physical sensations. Some people experience sudden drops in temperature, an intense feeling of being watched, or the sensation of being touched by unseen hands. These encounters often leave visitors feeling uneasy and eager to leave the cemetery. Step Cemetery has drawn the attention of numerous paranormal investigators. Many investigations produce compelling evidence of supernatural activity, including EVPs, electronic voice phenomena, thermal imaging showing unexplained cold spots, and photographs capturing shadowy figures or other anomalies. These findings only reinforce the cemetery's reputation as a haunted location. The eerie allure of Steppe Cemetery has made it a popular spot for those seeking a brush with the supernatural. It is a frequent stop on local ghost tours and a destination for thrill-seekers looking to test their courage. Despite its haunted reputation, or perhaps because of it, Steppe Cemetery is also a place of quiet reflection for those interested in local history and the stories of the people buried there. Step Cemetery's blend of historical significance and paranormal activity makes it a fascinating location for both historians and ghost hunters. Whether you are drawn by the haunted legends or the desire to explore a piece of Indiana's past, the Hannah House on the south side of Indianapolis is one of the most renowned haunted locations in the state. Built in 1858 by Alexander Hanna, this stately mansion boasts a rich history intertwined with tales of tragedy and the supernatural. Over the years, the Hanna House has become a magnet for paranormal investigators and ghost enthusiasts drawn by its eerie legends and reported ghostly activities. Alexander Hanna, prosperous businessman and civic leader, constructed the Hanna House as a family residence. The mansion, built in the Italianate style popular in the mid-19th century, became known for its elegant design and luxurious appointments. However, beyond architectural beauty, the house played a significant role in the Underground Railroad. It served as a secret refuge for runaway slaves seeking freedom in Canada. One of the most tragic events associated with the Hannah House is a fire that reportedly broke out in the basement while slaves were hiding. Several runaway slaves perished in the blaze according to legend. Their bodies were hastily buried in the basement to conceal their presence. That incident is believed to be the source of much of the paranormal activity reported at the Hannah House. Visitors and paranormal investigators have experienced various unexplained phenomena, including cold spots, disembodied voices, and ghostly apparitions. Some of the most frequently reported phenomena include apparitions. Many visitors claim to see ghostly figures, often described as shadowy or mist-like, moving through the halls and rooms of the mansion. These apparitions are usually in period clothing, which adds to their eerie authenticity. Disembodied Voices One of the most common experiences at the Hannah House is that of phantom voices when no one else is present. The words are often soft and indistinct, but occasionally they're quite clear. Some witnesses report conversations in what sounds like old-fashioned dialects, physical sensations. Visitors have reported feeling sudden drops in temperature, as well as the sensation of being touched or brushed against by unseen hands. These experiences are often accompanied by an overwhelming sense of sadness or unease. Moving Objects Objects in the house are said to move on their own, including doors that open and close, furniture that shifts, and items that disappear and reappear in different locations. Several specific ghosts are said to haunt the Hannah House. Among the most notable are slave spirits. The spirits of the runaway slaves who perished in the basement fire are believed to be among the most active. Visitors have reported seeing their apparitions and hearing their anguished cries. 
Alexander Hanna. Original owner Alexander Hanna is also said to linger in his former home. His presence is often felt in his old bedroom, where visitors see his ghostly figure and experience an intense feeling of being watched. The Lady in White Another frequently cited apparition is that of a woman in a white dress. She is often seen wandering the upper floors and is believed to be a former resident or guest of the house. The Hannah House's haunted reputation has attracted numerous paranormal investigators and has been featured on various ghost hunting television shows. These investigations have yielded a wealth of evidence supporting the claims of supernatural activity, including EVP recordings, photographic anomalies, and video footage of unexplained events. The mansion hosts ghost tours and overnight stays, offering the public a chance to experience its haunted history firsthand. The tragic events of its past, particularly its role in the Underground Railroad and the fire that claimed the lives of runaway slaves, have left an indelible mark, contributing to its haunted legacy. Whether you visit out of curiosity or a genuine interest in the supernatural, the Hannah House offers an experience that is both historically enriching and spine-tinglingly eerie. Central State Hospital in Indianapolis, Indiana, is steeped in historical significance and paranormal lore. Originally established in 1848 as the Indiana Hospital for the Insane, this sprawling complex operated for over 150 years. It became a prominent institution for the treatment of mental illness. However, the long history couldn't escape tales of mistreatment, tragic deaths, and numerous ghostly encounters that have cemented its reputation as one of the most haunted locations in Indiana. Central State Hospital began as a progressive institution aimed at providing humane treatment for individuals with mental illnesses. Over the years, the hospital expanded significantly, with numerous buildings added to accommodate the growing number of patients. By the early 20th century, it housed thousands of patients and employed a large staff of doctors, nurses, and support personnel. Despite its initial mission of compassionate care, the hospital's history includes periods of overcrowding, underfunding, and controversial treatment methods. Patients were often subjected to harsh conditions, including confinement, electroshock therapy, and experimental surgeries. The hospital's long and often troubling history has made it a focal point for paranormal activity. Visitors and investigators have reported a wide range of ghostly encounters and unexplained phenomena, including apparitions. One of the most frequently reported paranormal experiences at Central State is the sighting of ghostly figures. These apparitions are often described as shadowy, translucent or mist-like, and are typically seen wandering the hallways, patient rooms, and common areas of the abandoned buildings. Disembodied Voices Many visitors hear voices when no one else is present. These voices range from whispers and cries to full conversations, often in the distinct tones and dialects of former patients and staff members. Some have even reported hearing their names called out in empty rooms. Unexplained Noises The hospital is known for a variety of strange sounds, including footsteps down deserted corridors, doors slamming shut, and mysterious bangs and thuds. These noises often occur without any apparent cause and contribute to the site's eerie atmosphere, cold spots, and physical sensations. Sudden drops in temperature and cold spots are commonly experienced at Central State Hospital. Visitors also report feelings of being touched or grabbed by unseen hands, as well as sensations of heaviness or pressure, particularly in areas where patients were once confined. Several specific spirits are said to haunt Central State Hospital, each adding to the complex's haunted reputation. The Nurse one of the most frequently cited apparitions is that of a nurse dressed in an old-fashioned uniform. She is often seen tending to invisible patients or walking the hallways with a purposeful stride. Some believe she is the spirit of a nurse who dedicated her life to caring for the mentally ill and continues to do so in death. The Little Girl 
The ghost of a young girl is also reported at the hospital. She is often seen playing in the corridors or peering out of windows. Her identity remains unknown, but her presence adds a poignant touch to the haunted site. The Tormented Patient Many reports include sightings of a distressed male patient, often described as agitated or confused. This spirit is believed to be the manifestation of one of the many patients who suffered under the harsh treatments and confinement of the institution. Central State Hospital has garnered attention from numerous paranormal investigators and ghost hunters. These investigations have produced a wealth of evidence, including EVP recordings, photographs of unexplained anomalies, and video footage of ghostly activity. The hospital has been featured on various television shows and in paranormal documentaries, further cementing its status as a haunted hotspot. The site offers tours and paranormal events. No discussion on the paranormal in Indiana would be complete without mentioning the infamous Demon House. The Demon House in Gary, Indiana is a relatively new site in terms of haunting. This notorious location is shrouded in chilling legends and terrifying lore. This seemingly ordinary house on Carolina Street gained infamy through reports of unexplained phenomena, demonic possession, and ghostly apparitions. The history of the Demon House captivated paranormal enthusiasts, investigators, and skeptics alike, making it a focal point for discussions on the supernatural. The story of the Demon House begins in November 2011, when Latoya Ammons and her three children moved into the rental property. Almost immediately, the family began experiencing strange and disturbing occurrences. The first signs were innocuous, footsteps, creaking doors, and unexplainable cold spots. However, these minor disturbances quickly escalated into something far more sinister. Ammons reported that her children were displaying alarming behavior, including speaking in guttural voices, exhibiting superhuman strength, and levitating. These incidents prompted her to seek medical and spiritual help. During one particularly harrowing episode, Ammon's nine-year-old son was reportedly thrown against a wall by an unseen force, and her daughter was seen levitating above her bed. The severity of these events led Ammons to believe her family was under attack by demonic forces. The situation drew the attention of numerous authorities. The Indiana Department of Child Services, DCS, and medical professionals became involved, initially skeptical but soon confronted with their own inexplicable experiences. DCS caseworkers and medical staff reported witnessing strange occurrences, including one incident where a child was observed walking backward up a wall in a hospital. The Gary Police Department also investigated the house, documenting strange occurrences such as electronic equipment, malfunctioning, mysterious footprints, and even an unexplained oily substance dripping from the blinds. Despite extensive investigations, no logical explanations could be found for these phenomena. While the Demon House became famous due to the events that unfolded after 2011, there are accounts and speculations about its history that suggest a longer legacy of strange occurrences. The house, built in the early 1920s, is located in a region with a complex and sometimes troubled history. Gary, Indiana, experienced rapid growth due to the steel industry, leading to a boomtown atmosphere with a mix of prosperity and hardship. Some believe that the land itself may harbor residual energies from past events. Local folklore hints at other unsettling incidents on the property before Ammon's residency, though concrete documentation is sparse. Neighbors and previous tenants have occasionally mentioned feelings of unease and unexplained noises, though none reported the extreme phenomena described by the Ammons family. This lack of detailed historical records leaves much of the earlier paranormal activity in the realm of speculation and anecdotal evidence. The media caught wind of the story, and it quickly became a sensation. News outlets covered the bizarre events, dubbing the property the Demon House. The tale reached its zenith when paranormal investigator Zach Bagans purchased the house in 2014 to document the haunting for a documentary film. 
Bagans and his crew experienced their own share of terrifying incidents, including sudden illnesses, physical attacks, and eerie visual phenomena. Bagans' documentary, Demon House, released in 2018, delves deep into the history, personal accounts, and investigations surrounding the property. The film presents evidence and testimonies that suggest the presence of malevolent entities within the house. In 2016, Baggins made the controversial decision to demolish the Demon House, citing concerns over the safety of those involved and the belief that the demolition might disrupt the malevolent forces within. Despite the demolition, the legend of the Demon House continues to thrive. The artifacts from the house, preserved by Baggins, are displayed in his haunted museum in Las Vegas, further cementing the home's dark legacy. The Demon House in Gary, Indiana remains one of the most compelling and controversial cases in paranormal history. Whether one believes in the supernatural or not, the extensive documentation, credible witnesses, and the sheer number of unexplained phenomena make it a captivating subject. The house's story is a blend of horror and intrigue, reflecting humanity's perennial fascination with the unknown and the possibility that some places are truly haunted. It's your first look inside the house known as the Portal to Hell, a place where demons supposedly wrought havoc with a helpless family in horror straight out of the exorcist. That the power of Christ compels you! This man just bought the notorious house in Gary, Indiana for the bargain basement price of $35,000. What compelled you to buy this house? I have a passion for investigating claims of paranormal. Zach Bagans is the host of the Travel Channel's Ghost Adventures. We spoke inside the front porch, the precise spot where a terrorized mom claims that horse flies mysteriously swarmed in the dead of winter, as they did in the Amityville Horror. Then there was that mysterious figure that appeared in the window when the house was supposed to be empty. This is the other side of that window. There are reports that there was a, a residue that would come down the blinds. It was horrible. This is the woman who lived in the House of Horrors with her three children before Zach Bagans bought it. Latoya Ammons fought back tears when she told us how they fled in terror after her daughter was raised right off her bed. She says the demon sounded like this. We've waited five months. It sounded like something dead. She says she anointed the rooms with holy oil and read aloud from the Bible. But the nightmare went on and on and listened to a sound that cannot be explained by police who looked into the mysterious goings on. While two cops are talking in the basement, someone can be heard saying, hey. Embrace yourself for what Latoya says happened to her son when she and her mom took him to the hospital. It's right out of the movie Poltergeist. He walked up the wall and did the backwards flip. How did everybody in the hospital react to your son walking up the wall? They took off and they ran. The uh, doctor from the psych ward said that's not that's, that's not real, that's not human. No human can do that. Speaking of deep, mysterious voices. You in there! Those are the chilling words Captain Charles Austin will never forget. The 36-year veteran of the Gary, Indiana Police Department had just finished investigating strange occurrences in the house and was in his patrol car talking on the phone when he says something bizarre happened. All of a sudden, while I'm involved in this conversation, the AM FM radio went to static and turned up very loud and it said, You in there? And the person on the phone said, what the hell was that? And I said, I don't know. What was your reaction? I was in shock. Exorcizo te umbedissime. Enter Father Michael Maginot, a local priest who got permission from the Bishop of Gary, Indiana, to perform an exorcism on Latoya. Did you at one point believe this house was the portal to hell? It, there was a portal. Latoya moved out of the house and now lives many miles away. She knows her story is hard to believe. Some people claim that you made this all up, that this was some sort of an elaborate hoax. Is this a hoax? No, uh, I don't feel that someone will have a reason to make something up like that. Do you believe that house is possessed by demons? I do. I feel that uh, there's something very bad going on in that house.
Perhaps the most beautiful feature of Indiana is its wooded countryside, the rolling hills and magnificent colors that make it an ideal home for those who enjoy hiking. Of course, some woods are better for hiking than others. After all, you wouldn't want to hike in a haunted woods unless, of course, you didn't believe in such things. There is a story of a professor at one Indiana college who did not believe. Some 75 years ago, the people of a small town discovered that a murder had been committed. Outraged, they turned their anger against the only stranger in town, a salesman, and chased him into the brush. He eluded them for a day and a night, but eventually he was caught. And, despite his cries of innocence, he was hanged. It is said that his spirit still haunts that woods, but even despite evidence of that crime, the professor was skeptical. After all, a ghost holds no terrors for an educated man. Again, the chase lasted for a day and a night, but this time with a happier outcome. The professor escaped, and was thought by local townspeople to be lucky indeed. After all, you shouldn't walk through a haunted woods, especially on the exact day of the ghost's hanging. There's something about driving alone at night that can make anyone a little nervous. The darkness, the quiet, the twisting shapes and shadows just outside your vision. And of course if you're driving on Cable Line Road here in Indiana, there's something else that might make you a little uneasy. The many stories of a huge man-like beast who stalks the road by night. The Cable Line Monster. It was late one October evening that Tony Zarnicki thought of those stories. The cable line monster was said to stand almost eight feet tall, to weigh hundreds of pounds, and to be covered with a thick tangle of coarse black hair. His eyes were described as twin red fires that could freeze the marrow in a man's bones with simply a glance, and his temper was said to be very bad. Tony tried not to think about the cable line monster. After all, this was Indiana, and creatures like that simply don't exist, especially not in Indiana. So it was foolish to be afraid, and if he turned his mind to other things, he wouldn't think of the dark, and how alone he was, and that the cable line monster lays in wait for cars passing in the night, fully capable of pouncing quickly enough to catch them. 
and that the drivers of those cars were dragged off to a mysterious lair in the deep woods, never to be heard from again, because in the day, search parties could find nothing more than huge tracks, and at night, no search parties would stay in Cable Line Woods. Pony found that he was shivering in the warm night, which was silly. After all, the Cable Line monster was just a story. Unfortunately for Tony, not all stories have happy endings. Of course, the story really doesn't end here. It continues to grow, to change, to be harder to deny as time goes on. They say that the Cable Line monster still walks that woods, is still glanced from cars lucky enough to be out of reach in the shadowy parts of Cable Line Road. But perhaps you don't believe stories either, and think perhaps that night Tony just wasn't watching. Then drive Cable Line Road yourself some night. It's easy to find. Just look for the great twisted tree where Tony waits. Watching. Sometimes, it seems like the only way to find adventure in Indiana is to go looking for it, which is exactly what three boys did. After weeks of pleading and days of planning, they had arranged their first real camp out all on their own. It had already been a busy day, looking in stream beds for Indian arrowheads, lifting rocks in search of snakes, and deciding just what to do in case they ran into a grizzly bear. In fact, as the day grew on, all this talk of arrows, snakes, and bears began to get on their nerves, at least a little, so they had built their tent most carefully in the center of the largest open field they could find. After all, if you have a good view of what's sneaking up on your tent, you have longer to run. Still, the campers had more immediate worries, like how to get the lantern started. How the can opener had managed to disappear. And why just one corner of the tent wouldn't stay down. As night began to approach, the boys agreed things had been going pretty well. The missing can opener was found and a dinner of baked beans and chocolate bars had been extremely satisfying. So, after telling a suitable number of ghost stories, it seemed like a good time to turn in. After all, there was another day of adventure ahead. The evening was extremely warm. Too warm for sleeping bags, in fact. So, quite comfortably, the boys lay down and waited for the sounds of the night to lull them to sleep. At 3 a.m., one of the boys awakened because of a freezing cold wind. Was it some sort of a freak storm coming? Or could it possibly be something else? thoughts of boys who awaken in the center of a centuries-old graveyard, or do they think of nothing except trying to get home alive? The boys escaped, but the graveyard and the tent the boys might have stayed in were never found again.
Many people feel that Indiana is quite a romantic spot, a nice place to marry and settle down. Yet Elvira Hicks had a serious problem. She wanted out of her marriage but didn't believe in divorce. After all, the minister had said, until death do you part. So Elvira decided to sort of speed things up a bit. While her husband slept, she poured gasoline throughout their home, soaking every piece of furniture. Then, standing by the back door, she threw a lighted match which instantly ignited the house. But the workings of fate are mysterious indeed, and Elvira's husband awakened and escaped out the front door. The back door was locked from the outside, and Elvira could not escape, perishing in the flames intended for her husband. That is said to be the reason that on certain moonlit nights, Elvira's tombstone can even now be seen, shrouded in ghostly flames. <laughs> We leave you with a story that reflects a fundamental truth about haunted Indiana, that it cannot be predicted or avoided. After all, maybe you don't plan to hike in the woods or go camping, and just maybe you can keep from driving at night. But you were planning on going to bed tonight, weren't you? One night, surprisingly close to where you live, a boy named John prepared to go to sleep. However, he did not sleep long. In the light of day, a mysterious sound coming up a few stairs did not seem quite so frightening. More than likely a trick of the wind, or perhaps just imagination. Unfortunately, such comforts tend to fade with the setting sun. The next morning, John explained to his parents about the sound coming closer and closer to his door each night. His parents assured him that with the front door locked, he must have been imagining things, probably from watching too much television. He was completely safe, no matter what he thought he heard at night. Oh. 
The next morning, John was a little late coming downstairs for breakfast, so his mother climbed the stairs to his room. Why, without someone to wake him, John would just never get up. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment, and share to keep fascinating content coming here at Nightmare Nexus.